All right, eight seven math. So that is all of you. Well, not all of you, most of you, I should say. So if you're still working on your homework, stop working on your homework. You're now working up here. So let's start with lesson 32. Lesson 32. Okay, so we're on the metric system. So if you're following along in your book, which you should be, we're on page 215, page 215. So the metric system. So the metric system, where do we use the metric system? What parts of the world do we use metric system? Little geography question here. William? Oh, but, but where? What part of the world? Oasis? America. <laughs> there you go. Everywhere except America. <laughs> Everywhere except America. Yep, gone backwards. Um, so the different types of Oh, that's one thing I wanted to say. So if anytime you see or you read a question that says convert to what's called SI units, SI units, have any of you seen that before? No. no? So SI, that stands for System International. System International. So that just means international units, what everyone else around the world uses, which is kind of important because we don't live in just the US. Well, we do but the entire world is also very important. And if we want to be able to convert um, units, which we have to do quite often, you need to be able to convert back and forth between SI units, which would be, like William said, um, um, ounces, liters. Pounds? Pounds is US, yep. So whenever we need to convert back and forth, we need to be able to convert from SI units or um, international units back to America units, also known as the US customary system. Yeah, so we're talking about the other, everywhere except US. Yeah. Why is the problem? So it's probably wanting you to convert is what, I, is what my guess would be. So this page would, so when we do a, quiz or when we do a test, it would be very important for you to, on a note card, put down the um, metric system on there. So some of those conversions, I would highly suggest that because if you don't know what the actual units are, it's gonna be kind of hard to do the conversion. Okay, so first off, units of length. Um, for every 10 millimeters, you have one centimeter. Every 1,000 millimeters, one meter. 100 centimeters, you have one meter. 1,000 meters, you have one kilometer. So that's one of those um, units of length. So if you are converting something from meters to millimeters, you need to be able to do that. So that is all within the metric system. That is all within the metric system. Um, so let's try example one here. Let's try example one. So you can see what I'm talking about rather than just listen to me ramble. No. So I have five kilometers. So five kilometers, also known as five km, is how many meters equals question mark meters. How would I figure this out? How would I figure this out? Caleb, how would I figure this one out? Look at the scale, yep. And what does that scale say? Bingo. For every one kilometer, one km, that equals 1,000 meters. So now that I know that, how would I figure this problem out? Abby, how would I do this? Yep. So you multiply 1,000 times five, which equals 5,000. So it equals 5,000 meters, which would be my question mark right there. Put your what? Yes. So Oasis brought up a really good point. Make sure you remember your units. On some of your guys' exams, I had to take off half a point here and there because some of you weren't putting down your units. So make sure you always remember to put your units. So for this, make sure I made sure I put 5,000 M or 5,000 meters. That's very important that you know what you're measuring in. So remember those units or you will lo be losing points. Okay, 
Example number, yeah, example number two. I'm not gonna do letter B because it's pretty repetitive. And I think you guys got that one. So example two, a two liter bottle, a two liter bottle, so I'm gonna write two liters, can hold how many milliliters of beverage? So equals question mark ML. So I need to find how many milliliters. So first off, we would look at our conversion chart. So Jaden, how would I figure this one out? Two liters equals how many milliliters? What's my conversion for that one? It's on page 217 if you're on a different page. So how many milliliters are in a liter? Yeah, so 1,000 1, milliliters equals one liter. So did you notice that in this, the ML, the M is lowercase and the L is uppercase. So that's really important to remember whenever you're doing any, any kind of um, conversion. So the M is lowercase, the L is uppercase. If you put both of them as lowercase, that's technically not correct because you are talking about not milliliters anymore, you're talking about something else. And that's the same thing with centimeters. So centimeters, they are both lowercase. They are both, you don't put it like this, you don't put C capital M, lowercase C capital M. So make sure they're both lowercase. So how would I figure it out now that I have my conversion here? Courtney? Do I times two by a thousand? So I have, oh yes, sorry. So yep, you multiply two times 1,000. I was thinking it was the other way. So I have 1,000 milliliters and I multiply by two and that's gonna equal 2,000 milliliters. And so how do I know if I need to multiply or if I need to divide? When do I know if I need to multiply or if I need to divide? Yeah, yeah, so my question mark right here, we don't know what it is. When I look at the bigger number, so this 1,000, that's the bigger number than this one, I know I'm going to have to multiply the 1,000 times the two. So that's, that's a dumbed down version of how to think about it. So when you're looking at the conversion, milliliters, that big 1,000, it's bigger than that one liters, that number. So you're gonna multiply. So if I was doing that in reverse, if I was trying to find out Actually, is that the next example? No, I don't even think they do it in this. So if I had, I don't know how many liters I have, but I know that I have, let's say 1,000 milliliters. So how many liters, actually let's do, not that easy. Let's do a little bit more challenging. So I, still, still pretty easy. So I don't know how many liters, but I know I have 2,000 milliliters. So I'll put up my conversion, 1,000 milliliters equals one milliliter or one liter. So what am I gonna do to find out how many liters are here, Caleb? Uh, I'm, I'm not times in it here. I'm gonna divide it. Yep, because, because the 1,000 milliliters is the larger number than the one liter. So you could do 2,000 divided by 1,000, or you could just get rid of all those zeros. Since they have the same amount of zeros, and you could say two divided by one, which we all know is two. Good job. Random person. Random middle schooler who's going through puberty. <laughs> yes, Caleb. On the homework, you want us to write the conversion. No, you don't have to write the conversion. Yep. Okay, let's finish up with example four. So. Oasis, I know you asked me about where is the conversion for Celsius to Fahrenheit. Did you find it? No. 
No, he didn't find it? Okay, then let's... I was looking at example four. But I didn't okay, let's talk about example four then. It's not 1.8. So example four, so it says a temperature increases, wait, a temperature increase of 100 degrees Celsius is an increase of how many degrees Fahrenheit? So we go up 100 degrees Celsius, also known as plus 100 degrees Celsius. So going up also means plus 100 degrees Celsius. Um, so how many degrees Fahrenheit would that be? How would I figure this out? How would I figure this out? William? Yeah, but if, when I look on that little scale right there on page 218, does it tell me? It doesn't. Actually, it does if you look at the thing with the it. In the solution? Yeah. But you're not always going to have the solution when you're going through. Can I just explain it? Yeah, go ahead and explain. So when you read it, it's um, down the second to last sentence. It says water temperature is at 30 degrees and oil is at 212. You go up to the scale 100 feet, then it says water boils. Yeah. And down there, water boils at 212. So 100 feet equals 212. And so with this right here, both of them would equal 212, and you would just have to add both of them. So let me give you the exact conversion here, which they do not actually give you, which yeah. kind of irritates me. So for every and this will make sense once you see it. So for every 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so I would write this down in your notes now because they do not list it in your book. For every 32 degrees Fahrenheit, this equals zero degrees Celsius. Oh, yeah. So if it's, yeah. So if you're at one degree Celsius, yeah, you'd be at 33. So for this example, I can't believe it doesn't, is it just this lesson it doesn't list it? Let me look to see if they have a conversion it somewhere. List it. I'm seeing if it does in a different lesson though. Oh, it just counts in um, Oh, there we go. Oh, it's all the way in 633. Oh. It is. Maybe they're just not going to give you that complicated of ones yet. They did give you a little one side. They don't really explain very well. Yeah. Which I wish they would have given it to you. No, it doesn't. It says it does, but it doesn't. What about 752. Oh, it doesn't give it until 752, not till lesson 108. All right, so you guys aren't, I don't need to teach you this yet because we have another 70 lessons until we get to this. So I won't get into it yet. Yes. Yeah, what was that William? Yeah, that one was a little- Letter D? It was me, it was really me. Okay, so I'll go over letter D up here on the board. Okay, a temperature increase of 10 degrees on the Celsius scale is equivalent to an increase of how many degrees on the Fahrenheit scale? Okay, so if we go up by 10 degrees on the Celsius scale, so plus 10 degrees Celsius, how many degrees does it go up on the Fahrenheit scale? Oasis? 320? It goes up by 300 degrees, 320 degrees Fahrenheit? You know how hot that is, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. William? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, when you were, well, Alicia said a while ago was it increases by like 32 degrees of syrup. If we just go up to one on Celsius, it'd be 33. Right. Not exactly. That's not the perfect, that's not the equation which they don't yeah, give it to you. That's the thing. It, they have it listed in, um, they aren't actually telling you the correct way to do it, which 
is kind of irritating, but all you're doing right here, if it goes up by 10 degrees Celsius, you're going up by one degree Fahrenheit. So that just means, like, like William said, you're gonna be going up to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the very basic way of converting, but that's not the real way you should be doing it. Yep. It, it doesn't actually translate perfectly, yeah. Yeah. So for every 10 degrees Celsius you go up, you would go up another um, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which doesn't actually translate over. So that's just what the book's, book wants you to do, though, which is making me frustrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Letter B. Well, I gotta, I gotta work with the other group here. I know I'm gonna have to just start it now because we don't have a lot of time. Found it. 